So I want to welcome everybody uh, to the uh, presentation tonight, our senior parent meeting, talking about uh, how to navigate the, the college application process and, and all that. How many uh, parents in here, this is your first child, your oldest child, heading off to school? So yep, welcome. Probably a little nervous, not, not quite sure what it's going to look like and everything. How many people have had... Uh, one, two, or more students that have gone on to the college process. So if you look around, parents had your hands with their first. See, they made it. It's okay. Um, and they're the experts, and I could probably call them up here and have them do this, uh, this presentation uh, better than us. So um, they, they do get through. It is a little nerve-wracking that first time through. All the unknowns, all the, you know, the what-ifs. Um, I can, can tell you that there's, there's no magic formula that makes everything go perfectly. Um, any little mistake along the way that you kind of perceive as a mistake at the time, a lot of times comes back and it's like, okay, that actually worked out better than I thought. Um, so don't, don't worry, things always work out. Students end up where, where they're going to end up, and uh, sometimes students change after that, and they come back the next year and go to a different school or whatever, and that's fine too. Uh, you just want them to get settled in, into their school, into their program, and onto what they want to do, and, and they will do that. So, all right. See if my clicker, I need to turn that on. There we go. Uh, Mrs. Colleen uh, works in the front office there as a secretary to Mrs. Knapp. She asks that we pass along some messages tonight. Um, seniors are going to receive a letter with uh, important information about graduation, yearbook, dates, deadlines. Um, so make sure that you uh, take a look at that. We'll send updated information out as well as it becomes available. Um, we want to make sure that we keep the Career Center students um, engaged as well. So we send that information there. Uh, we go out as school counselors uh, several times throughout the year. We take pictures um, of the seniors so for the yearbook. We uh, check in, see what we can do to help out. We're going to go out and talk to them about the college application process as well. They work with Mrs. Freilich there at the uh, Career Center, but they're still Highland students. So any Career Center parents here, um, just know that we... We do everything we can to try to keep them engaged in the school here as well. Uh, Mrs. Clean is asking that to let uh, parents know tonight that they're looking for a couple of parents to kind of head up the baccalaureate um, at one of the local churches. Um, so she has her email address up there if that's something that uh, somebody wants to uh, kind of team up with a friend or get that together. That's usually put on by the parents, and we really appreciate that, and the students do as well. So I'm going to introduce the, uh, the counselors and then hand it off here for um, some more of the presentation. So we're very lucky to have four school counselors at the high school here um, so we can work with the, the students. We spend a lot of time with the seniors. Um, we probably spend more time with the seniors than the other students just because we, we know that's the kind of the, the final step there. We want to make sure that they um, can have all their questions answered and feel like they're, they're being supported there. So very fortunate uh, to be able to... Uh, divide the students up by alphabet is how we, we found this worked best so we can stay with these students all four years. We get ready to uh, write that letter of recommendation. Uh, we, we've, you know, hopefully gotten to know them uh, pretty well that we uh, can help them with that and uh, give them a pretty good uh, send off to where they're going. So uh, we do focus a lot on the college application process. We realize that not all students are going to go on to a four year college, so we I uh, want to help students in any avenue, if they're going on two-year train, whatever they're going to do, that's great, and we can help them do that. So uh, we focus mostly on the four-year because that's just a little more, a few more steps and a little more complicated, so we, we spend a lot of time on that here tonight. So um, the, the counselor that is normally the, the first um, one there, Mrs. Rains, is on maternity leave. Uh, she'll be coming back here later this semester. So we have uh, Mrs. Anderson here who is filling in. And if you can look over to her right, your left a little bit, you'll see that we're going to be losing uh, another counselor here probably in another month uh, for maternity leave, uh, Mrs. Lakins, and she works with students G through L. Uh, Mrs. Anderson will fill in. Um, she doesn't know this yet, but she's going to do both caseloads until they, just kidding. Um, we're going to work on uh, dividing that up so we can still meet everybody's uh, needs, but we're uh, kind of still working on it. It's a work in progress. Might be a little bit of an overlap. So, and we, we do a lot of things as a team anyway. So we we don't really do a whole lot uh, on our own. We we definitely work together very closely. 
bouncing things off each other, so uh, we'll make sure everybody's in good hands there. Uh, Mrs. Colbo couldn't be with us tonight. Uh, she works with students M through R, and I'm Mr. Arrington. I work with students' last names S through Z. Very uh, fortunate to have a, a new person. We, we certainly miss Mrs. Gamoff. Mrs. Gamoff was a, a staple here. Some of you I can see sitting out here, I know that uh, you had him as a student when you were here or uh, worked with Mrs. Gamoff um, in the past when she was helping get all the college applications and stuff out. She uh, retired, loving retirement. I haven't met anybody that doesn't. Um, so she's having a good time. But we have um, somebody that we're very fortunate to have, Mrs. Uh, Julie Norman. And she's just hit the ground running and doing a fantastic job. So very happy to have her. All right. And Mrs. Anderson will be next. So um, I get to talk to you a little bit about communication. Um, essentially, anytime we're in front of parents, we just want to make sure that you know how to get communication from the school. Um, I'm pretty sure most of you have done this by now, but there's the instructions up here. When you go to highlandschools.org slash communication, you're just entering your email, checking all the boxes, and hitting submit. Um, from Mr. Murray and Mrs. Koval, the senior class advisors. Um, seniors, please sign up for the class of 2024 Google Classroom. This is how we're going to be contacting you pretty often through the year. Um, the class advisor will contact you through this, and you can sign up for it through Remind at Swarm 2024, and that classroom code is LWLG2RG. So seniors, if you don't already have this, you might want to take a picture of that. Or parents, if your senior isn't with you, you might want to snap a picture of that real quick just in case. I'll leave that up for another minute because the next slide just says check your email. Please, 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 please remind your seniors to check their email. Teachers email, counselors email, our, that's our biggest form of communication with the kiddos. Please remind your students to check their email. Sorry? No. See a couple phones up. I'll wait. Everybody got it? Okay. So uh, graduation requirements, I'm pretty sure these have been pounded in your brain for at least the last four years. Um, again, I can leave it up here if you want to take a, a quick picture of it. And it's in the program of studies as well. But they all want to take pictures. <laughs> exactly. Um, okay, so reminder, uh, I know it, this was mentioned in the last meeting, but to remain eligible for athletics, you must have passed five one credit courses or the equivalent in the preceding grading period and maintain a GPA of uh, 1.5 and be enrolled in at least two and a half units of study each semester. I'm sorry, 1.5 or greater. This is very important. If they're, if they're not taking and passing that many classes, they won't be eligible for sports. And that rolls right into the NCAA requirements. Um, if you are considering a D1 or D2, uh, D2 school for athletics, please remember to register with the NCAA Clearinghouse. Um, communicate those intentions with the school counselor. So we need to know so we can submit transcripts through NCAA to help with your uh, enrollment process. Is that you? Clicker? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Addington had pointed out <laughs> that um, this slide says uh, less than 1.5 GPA, that it actually should be greater than a 1.5 GPA. You need to be passing those classes. So that's pregnancy brain. 
there. All right, we're going to talk about some post-secondary planning. Um, anytime a student graduates from Highland High School, we want them to land on one of the three big E's, either being enrolled in a post-secondary institution, enlisting in some form of branch of military, or being employed. We primarily talk about being enrolled, right? College, university, that's where a vast majority, about 90% of our Highland students go after high school. We'll touch a little bit on um, being enlisted. Um, and then after that part of the presentation, we'll come back around, we'll introduce some really cool people and have some save the dates for you guys that you'll wanna uh, make sure that you have on your calendar. All right. Uh, here is some data that we collect every year. So this is fresh off the press, the class of 2023. Here's the top five colleges that our Highland High School students um, will ha have are attending, actually probably moving in this weekend. Some of you guys have um, some, some uh, kiddos that are doing that. Uh, Ohio State University, that also encompasses the satellite campuses as well. So if they went to Newark or Mansfield, that's gonna be part of that. Kent State, University of Akron, BG, and OU. So. Typically, we, we tend to see uh, similar colleges as the top five. Sometimes Miami goes in there as well. Cincinnati, we've seen. So um, definitely some great schools that we have here in the state of Ohio. So I know that it's like real now, right? Because we're seniors and it's almost September and college application season is coming. We just want to remind you guys that you guys are ready for this, okay? We have been preparing for this with you. You guys have been preparing for this throughout the last four years. We've been doing some grade level meetings. You guys have taken the PSAT every fall. All the juniors took the SAT in the spring. That's something that was through the school. A lot of you guys also independently took the ACT or took the SAT again. Um, juniors, you were able to do a college visit last year, so now as seniors, you also get excused visits for colleges. I know that it says two on there. Honestly, if you, as long as you know you guys are in good academic standing and, and we know that it's all legit, go to colleges, go to college visits. Make sure that you're prioritizing that throughout this fall season. And then we've been doing you know, transcript audits uh, every year whenever we meet with you about your schedules. We're talking about Naviance, which will now be school links, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. And then we also have college reps that come to visit the school. Uh, we are getting slammed right now with college reps reaching out and saying, hey, here's the times that we're gonna be in your area. We'd love to come talk to your students. So uh, be on the lookout for that. Seniors are gonna be getting emails, um, kind of left, right, and center about certain colleges that'll be coming here specifically to speak with you guys um, or answer any questions that you guys have. Uh, college admissions applications, this is from the uh, National Association of College Admissions Counseling. We're still waiting on some updated information post-COVID in terms of statistics with this, but we just find that this is a nice, uh, um, a nice survey that they've done. This is the survey that they sent out to colleges asking what are the most important factors or indicators as you guys are considering admissions for students whenever you're looking at their applications. Pretty routinely, they're gonna say the strength of the curriculum, um, that's on your transcript, and then how you did in those classes. Uh, Highland High School is very well known, definitely in the state of Ohio, and also nationally whenever they get our school profile for how academically rigorous we are, right? Having, you know, 23 AP courses, a lot of honors courses. Um, we just have very fantastic students. They're aware of that, so as long as you have had that good fit challenge on your transcript throughout the last four years, and you're not, um, you're not compromising that senior year either. You still have a good blend of like that good fit challenge uh, your senior year, then, um, then, then you've, done, you've done great. Admission test scores, I know that that's number four on the list, but again, this was pre-COVID. Um, we are really finding post-COVID that a lot of colleges are, are kind of maintaining that test optional uh, option for students. I would say pretty routinely whenever we meet with the counselors after their admission cycle and after their acceptance cycle, they're saying that they're accepting about 50-50. So what that means is about 50% of the students that they're accepting had applied test optional, um, and then the other 50% they applied with a test score. 
the blanket statement that we always hear whenever we're talking to colleges is, if your test score matches or is better than your transcript and it's within that average range that you're gonna see on their website, then it's good to send. If it's, if it's something that helps the picture, send it. If it's something that doesn't help the picture, no need to send it. Highlight all the other awesome stuff that you guys have done in the resume that you guys have built for yourselves. Okay, so, man, it's kind of hard to breathe. We'll talk about... <laughs> yeah, Whew. no, I'm good. All right, We're <laughs> we'll talk about the type of applications that, that we have in this. Um, we talked about this during Junior Jumpstart in the spring semester, but like I said, it's kind of hitting you guys, and it's real now, and you might have some more um, concrete experiences as you guys are kind of talking about and thinking about your college application list. Three big ways to apply, early decision, early action, regular decision, and then there's like something called rolling admissions as well. Early decision is, is, is really the big one that, that we wanna hammer on and make sure that everybody understands what it is and that you guys are crystal clear about what that means. So early decision means that it is a legally binding application. So you submit your application, you can only apply ED to one school, you submit your application, and if you get accepted, then that means that you are bound, with an asterisk, to attend that institution, all right? Here's how it typically plays out. You're gonna have an earlier application deadline, typically November 1st, November 15th, December 1st at the latest, um, and then you're gonna receive your admissions decision earlier from the college on whether or not you got accepted. With that being said, typically, so like the national like date to declare what college you're attending is May 1st. If you apply early decision, they're gonna say, hey, here's the deadline that you need to let us know that you're coming. And it's typically like two weeks to a month after they let you know that you've been accepted. So you're making your decision a lot quicker and you're making this, the decision sometimes without fully kind of understanding what the financial aid package could look like, right? Because at that time, you're not gonna have scholarship decisions that are necessarily coming back, things like that. So it's a really big decision, and we, we definitely, it's, it's a family decision to make. Um, how many students typically apply early decision with us? It's not, it's, yeah, less than 10 a year. It's not very common. Um, sometimes it's, it's, it's a strategy that you may play if you are looking at a super selective university. Um, if you have a competitive application, but it's maybe something that you're just looking for that little extra push, because colleges, a, a reason that colleges like early decision is because they wanna secure spots, right? They wanna secure the fact that you're gonna be coming to the institution and they have that number um, and they have that quota. Um, so that's what's beneficial for them. Uh, also, if you get accepted into early decision, um, like you, you'll have to withdraw all of your other applications as well. So it's not like you can say, oh, I'm gonna wait until I hear back from so-and-so to find out you're withdrawing all of your other applications. A big thing that I've learned um, just as a counselor throughout the process of talking with my students and kind of going through with my students the process of early decision and I guess I never really thought about it, was like the emotional factor to it, right? Because a lot of times you're applying to your dream school, your number one choice, like, oh my gosh, I've been dreaming about that for so long, I would love to go there. What we would encourage you to think about is think about the scenario of what if you get accepted, but then financially it's not necessarily gonna work out or it's not necessarily gonna be the best decision for you or your family. And then you really have to kind of make that hard decision of, oh wow, now I have to turn down, right, this early decision th that I just got accepted into, um, especially because it's a quick decision that you have to make. I'm spending a lot of time on this slide, but I just really wanna stress that if you're thinking about early decision, definitely talk with your counselor and we'll kind of deep dive into that with you um, in your situation. Early action is not legally binding. This is where most of our, co of our students are gonna apply to. I would say about 65 to 70% of our students are gonna apply to these early action deadlines. So it's very similar timeline, early, early decision, but it is not legally binding. Aw, wow, that's really sweet, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> you could tell, you could tell. That was very nice of you, thank you. 
So yeah, very similar deadlines. You're also gonna receive the admissions decision earlier, but you're still gonna have until May 1st to figure out whether or not you wanna do. So it gives you time to get the full financial aid package. It gives you time to kind of do a couple more college visits, solidify what you guys wanna do. A lot of honors colleges are gonna use this deadline, right? So if you're planning on going and applying for the honors college, this is the deadline that you're gonna be looking at as well. Oh, and then also merit-based scholarships, which are scholarships through the institution that you earn simply because of your application. It's, there's, not, there's nothing supplemental that you need to like, an essay or anything additional that you need to do. It's just because you're a rock star and what your application shows, this is the money that we're gonna offer you. That's typically early action deadlines. And then rolling admissions, um, these are kind of like, there's not a concrete deadline. Whenever they look at, whenever they get your application, they're gonna review it. They're gonna let you know whether or not you got in. And then it's just, like I said, it's kind of rolling. Um, the results of that, um, typically the earlier that you apply, the better chance of admissions that you would have just because spots you know, fill up. I say that, but I also don't wanna scare you or overwhelm you. We have many students that apply rolling admission, January, February, March, to great institutions and have no problem uh, getting accepted. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, one of the things I, I forgot to say earlier when I was uh, doing the introduction here is this is being taped. Um, it's gonna be on hls.media, so thank you, Brian, for uh, coming back this year and taking care of that. Uh, does a great job with that and the editing. He also, um, he, he and his company are the ones that did the, uh, the football game this past uh, weekend, uh, Friday, and did a great job with that. So thank you very much, Brian, for that. And we're going to make this PowerPoint uh, available, too, off of uh, hls.media. So if you missed anything or you're like, wow, they're going way too fast for that, you know, through that, um, we will have this available for you to check out later. So, um, so the, the next steps for the seniors in the next couple weeks, we're gonna start uh, scheduling meetings with the seniors after Labor Day. Um, most of the college uh, application deadlines, November 1st is the first big one. There are a couple schools um, that are before that that are uh, October 15th, the vast majority are November 1st or December 1st for that early action deadline Mrs. Lakins was talking about. We, we certainly encourage you to get everything in before that early action deadline. Most of those schools don't start looking at the applications until right after that deadline, like Ohio State um, has to be in before November 1st. They start looking at them November 2nd. So it's not like if you get everything into Ohio State a month early, that it helps. They don't even start looking at them later, uh, until later, so. Um, every time we sit down with the senior, we do a graduation audit. Uh, we wanna make sure we're not missing anything. We don't wanna see a health class or a PE class or something like that hanging out there. It's gonna cause any problems for graduation. We talk to them about where they wanna go. At these meetings, um, parents are certainly welcome to be at that meeting. Um, it's about 50-50 uh, students that bring parents and students that don't. It really, it, we're, we're fine either way. Uh, we want to make sure that everybody has all their questions answered. The only part of that I can say, and I know it's very difficult to do, easier to say, parents, try to let your son or daughter kind of steer this boat. Um, they're the ones that are going to be at college next year. They're going to be making a lot of their decisions on their own. They're going to be an adult soon. Um, I, I understand, but try to let them really take the reins on this and start learning those, uh, those skills now uh, when they still have that support close by. Um, college deadlines, we talked about that. Colleges are, are very different than our, our Highland deadlines. Uh, we've become, Highland deadlines, we kind of laugh and we say, okay, the deadline is this. And we're like, yeah. Every, so the two or three days later is when we start getting most of them in. Um, so colleges don't do that. Uh, someone uh, not too long ago turned in, a, went to Ohio State um, the next day after and weren't, they weren't uh, um, eligible for scholarships, for the merit scholarships. So, uh, the colleges don't mess around. That's the date they stick to it. So make sure you get those in. Uh, NCA we mentioned earlier. FAFSA we're going to talk about um, in a little bit. FAFSA just threw a little uh, uh, curveball at us with their, their date and how they're doing it this year. So uh, I'll let Dr. Ann uh, Gates talk about that later. Uh, we have uh, working with school links. In the past we've used Naviance. Um, Naviance became kind of expensive. Um, so we were looking for ways to try to, to cut the cost with that, and we're fortunate enough to find school links. 
Um, so far, it's, we like it a lot. Um, it does a lot of the same things, if not everything that Naviance did, but it's just a lot cheaper. So um, we'll be working with uh, students to show them how to use that. It'll do all the same things that Naviance did as far as requesting uh, transcripts, letters of recommendation, all that. But there actually some of the stuff actually seems to be a little more user friendly. So win-win. Um, and we'll definitely answer any questions as we go along there. So uh, the college admission deadline here September, October. This is when we're meeting with the students. So we tell the students over and over, the first thing you need to do is meet with us. Schedule that meeting with your, your, your school counselor. That's where we can get everybody on the same page, find out what we need to do or can do to help you through this process. So schedule that meeting. Um, our time start filling up, especially if we get close to those deadlines. And people start saying, well, you can't get me in for two weeks. It's like, we can't. We're, we're really booked. So start scheduling those early um, and get that all taken care of. Uh, the recommendation letters, we're going to talk to students about asking teachers in person. If your school wants a recommendation letter or you, you want to send one, um, ask them in person. We recommend that they give them some sort of a uh, brag sheet. Um, the college board calls it that or a bulleted list or an actual resume um, so that the teachers can make sure that they make that unique to that student and it's not just kind of a general letter um, so they can uh, try to help them out. There might be something that the teachers don't know that your son or daughter did outside of school that they can put in the letter that could help. Um, they actually apply, attend college visits, not too late to do that, um, to, to actually go see. And we also encourage, before you make your final decision, uh, a lot of parents and students will go look at that school one more time, especially if it's, it's close by, and just make sure that that's, that's the one for them. Um, the institutional scholarships, Mrs. Lakins talked about that. Most of those are by just filling out the application, uh, either the Common App or the, the, the institutional application to the college. Uh, makes you eligible for those institutional scholarships, allows are merit-based. Um, sometimes you can talk to, uh, and I'd encourage you to do that, to the admissions office and the Office of Financial Aid and say, is there any, are there any other scholarships that I should be applying for now? Sometimes there'll be scholarships that'll be unique to um, a specific program or college that they're going to within the university. Sometimes there'll be an honors um, scholarship that they can maybe apply to. Um, but uh, sometimes the schools, and they're all different, some your application they consider for honors, some you have to apply directly to the honors college, so uh, you really need to kind of check through, read through what the college is asking for, and just follow those, those directions there. Uh, December, February is when, um, she says fast for December now, that used to be October, um, so now it's actually December. Um, but they're still going to go off the previous years. I, I'm not going to steal any of Mrs. Uh, Dr. Ann Gates' uh, thunder there, so I'll let her do that. And as we said, May 1st is the national deadline. So, again, we put this up here. Deadlines are closer than they appear. No need to panic. No one is behind. Uh, is, no one's missed anything. Um, but we also don't want students to wait until Halloween um, to schedule the, the appointment with us and say, hey, I think I want to apply to Ohio State. All right, we got a lot of work to do then because it's, it's due tomorrow. So um, make sure that uh, they come and see us early. Um, but again, no one's missed anything, so deep breath. We're all good there. Um, so uh, like I said, student-led, I mentioned that earlier. And again, I know this is difficult. You're like, you know, I can't even get my son to take the garbage out. And he's supposed to. I'm supposed to rely on him to, uh, you know, get this college application filled out correctly and in on time. I get it. Um, but this is a good time to practice that. Um, notice I said the son, too, and people that have sons and daughters, I, I do, too. I, you know what I mean. Um, so the school links, again, um, everything kind of goes through there. ACT, SAT, if they're going to take the SAT, um, or it would be the ACT again, they need to apply and get that uh, registered right now um, because some schools uh, won't take it after that November 1st deadline, so they need to take that test and get their score back to be able to get it to the college in time. So they've got one last chance here um, for most schools. Some schools will say, you know what, we'll take it later. If you've got a better one, we'll take it. We'll use it for admissions. We'll use it for scholarships. Some won't. So um, check your school that you're like your number one, number two school. See what they're saying. 
as far as uh, you know, your, what you're planning on doing with your ACT, SAT, but you got one last shot here uh, for a lot of those schools. And they're going to send that directly from ACT or the College Board for the SAT. Um, Highland doesn't send those. They want those officially from the testing institution. Um, so letters of recommendation. Um, some schools like Ohio State, it's optional. Um, it's, students do not have to send one in. Some only, only take one. Some will take you know, one or two. Some require two. Case Western requires two. Some schools like OU say they take up to 10. I'm like, wow, that's a lot of reading. Uh, Ohio State has, I think they had, what, 60-some thousand applications last year. So that's why they're not going to take more than one letter. They're not going, they don't have the resources to read 120,000 letters. Um, so they, they basically say, well, take it, but you don't have to have one in for Ohio State. So it's really up to you if you think that a teacher in a specific program is going to help um, get you in there. Um, a lot of these, again, realize these are being sent through uh, school links kind of anonymously. Never seen a bad letter recommendation, so don't worry. Um, and a student's not going to ask a teacher if they think is going to give them uh, anything but uh, glowing reviews. So every one that I've seen uh, from teachers have all been really good recommendations, so uh, rest assured with that. Okay, so we um, work with the Common App and then applications directly to the institution. Those are the two ways that students will send college applications to colleges. We do not work with the Coalition app. So if you have a school, um, there's only, there aren't that many out there. Um, most of the time, if it's a Coalition app school, they also take it directly to the institution. I've not seen any, I don't know, Mrs. Lakins, have you seen any where we couldn't send it directly to that was a Coalition? I've not seen that. Um, so things change from year to year. But uh, just, just don't go through the coalition. We cannot send stuff that, uh, that way. Uh, it has to be either the Common App or directly to. My rule of thumb that I tell my students, uh, the Common App uh, opened up um, earlier. I know a lot of you saw that opened up on August 1st. Good time to look at it, start filling it out. Just make sure you have the login information. Look at the essays. Doesn't need to be completed yet. A lot of the teachers here are going to work with students on those essays. Um, so if you have a school that is requiring the Common App, like Ohio State, then you do it, and you can add on all the other schools. It's one common application, and you just tag the schools on. Sometimes those schools will require different essays, so you have to go through the school and see what essays are required for each. Sometimes there are a couple extra additional essays. Sometimes there aren't. Um, so my rule of thumb is if you're applying to three schools that don't require the Common App, Let's say you, you tell me I'm going to apply to BG, Akron, and Kent. I tell you, don't waste your time doing the Common App then. You can get those three applications directly through the institution done in probably about an hour or less, and the, the Common App takes you know, six, seven hours to do. So um, and there's no advantage or disadvantage either way. So if you've already started the Common App, fine. You know, that's, it's not going to hurt anything. Um, but sometimes you don't have to, so that's why that meeting with your counselor is important. But like I said, a lot of things like that, it's not going to be a make or break. It's not going to be anything that's going to uh, stop you from going to your dream school. So, um, Kyrie talked about that. I jumped ahead a little bit. Another pair of eyes on the essay. A lot of times the English teachers, parents, we tell students, you know, it's kind of awkward, but go in your room, shut the door, read it out loud. Uh, a lot of times you can catch things by hearing yourself um, talk you know, through that essay, what it sounds like, and make corrections. Uh, we're happy to look at them, too. Uh, a lot of times I tell them, I, I'm not an English teacher, I was a social studies teacher, I can help you pretty much with the grammar and the punctuation and stuff like that, but an English teacher will probably do a better job. I can certainly help you with content and stuff like that. Uh, but we're happy to help out either way, but getting that extra set of eyes is always good. Thank you. I saw a lot of you guys like jump whenever Mr. Addington had said six, seven hours for the Common App. It actually probably is going to take that long once you add your other colleges. The reason is, is because there's like the, the, the one major part of the application that's going to go with everywhere that you're applying to. Then once you start adding schools, a lot of schools have supplemental questions or essays or information that you need to also fill out that's only going to go to that college that you're applying to. 
So whenever it's all said and done, the Common App is a huge thing that our students are kind of constantly thinking through, especially their essay. Um, I have some students that have come up to me to talk about the essay topics that they're entertaining and um, that it's something that's really going to be a lot of time. So exactly like Mr. Addington said, if you're thinking three schools, none of them are Common App, it's, that's also a great option to, to do. Okay, let's uh, talk a little bit about school links. The date is going to be coming up later on in the slides for our mandatory um, senior meeting where we're actually going to walk you guys through how to do all of this. But this is the platform, like, like we had touched on, that students are going to use to request transcripts to be set. And then it's also how we, as counselors, and then the teachers are going to submit the letters of recommendations. Um, it's also how we communicate with seniors to know when and where they are applying. So this is a huge platform that we use. It has been really nice kind of getting to know School Link so far this year, um, incredibly user-friendly. Uh, a lot of the districts that are in the area have already been using school links and they're like, yeah, 10 out of 10, this is the one to use, which is why we felt really comfortable jumping ship doing this as well. Um, a couple things, so you're gonna access school links through Clever Portal, so just like you do pretty much with all of your other apps. This is through your, the student's um, Highland email account. They'll log on to Clever and then you'll see um, a, an app that has, that that app at the top right, that's the School Links app that you're gonna look at. This is just a screenshot that we took. You'll, once you get in and you kind of play around with it, um, but one really cool thing about School Links is that it directly communicates with Common App. So if you are gonna be applying through Common App, what you do is you just log in to Common App through School Links, and then all of the colleges that you've added onto your Common App are gonna automatically link over to your School Links account. It's gonna have the deadlines on there that, um, for how you're applying, and then it's also going to communicate with School Links about how many letters are needed, letters of recommendation are needed, depending on what college you're applying to. This is a little bit small, so this is an example of somebody applying to NYU, New York University. It's automatically gonna show you that in order for you to be able to submit your application, teacher evaluations, two optional. Those are the letters of recommendations, right? So you can optionally send two teacher recommendations. On school links, whenever a Highland student would sign in and then hit that request teacher evaluation, um, it's going to do a, a mass list of all of the staff members that we have here at Highland, and that's who you would click on. Of course, you're gonna talk to them in person like Mr. Addington had said, and this is how you're, you're gonna request that. Whenever you're applying Common App, as soon as you add the um, college to your final list, it's automatically going to request the school report, the counselor recommendation, and the transcript from your counselor, which is really nice. That's gonna be a huge thing for you guys. Again, we're gonna deep dive into that with the seniors here in the next couple of weeks. Um, Mr. Addington had touched on this, uh, when in doubt, call the admissions office. Um, if you're thinking, hey, I'm thinking about applying to o Ohio State November 1, and this is the test date that I want to take for the ACT, is that something that you guys would, would accept? Doesn't hurt to call. Okay, so when in doubt, call. We just don't want you guys to sit for a test that's going to be null and void or it's not going to be relevant for you guys um, because we know that there's that test fatigue and it's real. Um, we talked about test optional things, so we got a little bit ahead of ourselves. A huge thing, a huge thing that we cannot stress enough is make sure that you put your feet on a campus if you are seriously considering attending there. Before you say, yes, that's where I'm going to go, make sure that you guys um, are visiting the college campus. Um, that way you're just kind of getting a feel of what it's like. You really have an idea of where all the buildings are. Um, some people say, you know, they just get that feeling one way or the other, right? A lot of times in your head you have this, this you, you kind of uh, dream or uh, like have this perfectionistic idea of what you think this college is and then you go there and you're like, oh, wait, the pictures online look a lot prettier, right? So it's really good to kind of get your feet wet with all of that. And then also just the more college campuses that you visit, like the more you end up having like realistic expectations and ideas and concepts. Instead of it just being this cool new thing, it just ends up being this thing that you have to figure out how to make the best decision for yourself to find the best college for yourself. 
Again, never hurts to just communicate directly with the College of Admissions if you have a question directly with that college. And then also looking for opportunities to get involved. Um, we talked about letters of recommendation. A lot of times, like, we're kind of seeing nowadays that they're really only taking one or two because they, they want to see quality over quantity. It's not about how many people can write a letter. It's about the, the, the people that can just really write a solid letter that just truly can know and encompass you in a variety of different ways. Um, teachers are definitely ones that they like seeing. Um, they like seeing sophomore and junior year teachers. That's typically the lens that they're looking at. Because if you think about it, if you've only had your teacher, like your senior year teacher, write you a letter of recommendation, they can only speak for the first couple of months that they've known you in class. Whereas soft, sophomore, junior year, they've, they've had you all year. They can kind of speak to that fully. Um, one thing to know is Teach students, you guys can submit your application. Like, you don't have to wait for the teachers to send their, their letter in order for you to submit stuff on your end. As long as everything is in before the college deadline, then you guys are good to go. I know that sometimes students are like, oh, I can't hit submit yet because, you know, Mrs. So-and-so hasn't submitted on their end. You guys can still hit submit if you feel ready and it's good for you to go. And then as long as the teacher has it in before their deadline, then, then, then um, everything will be good. Uh, definitely want to give teachers notice to write a solid letter recommendation, right? So the process is you're going to go up to a teacher. I'm, I don't even want to. Mr. Snook, even though, because he retired, right? So I'm just going to use this as an example. You, you would go up to Mr. Snook and you would say, hey, uh, I'm planning on applying to colleges. Would you feel comfortable writing me a letter of recommendation? He's going to be absolutely no problem. We typically, like, the teachers really like if you give them a brag sheet or a resume, just kind of like a one-page bullet-pointed document of things that they can help attest to. While, um, while they're writing your, you know, your letter, just to kind of beef it up as much as possible. And then you're gonna say, thank you so much, the deadline is this date. And we want it to be at least two to three weeks before you talk to them. Um, that way they have plenty of time, and they're also getting requests from a lot of students too. So we wanna make sure that we're, we're respecting their time um, and making sure they can write you the strongest letter. Um, this is related to transcripts. Um, I would say probably letters of recommendation we want to ask even sooner. But um, if you have a November 1 deadline for a college, which is a very common deadline that you're going to see, then we would want to make sure that you have linked on your school links and you've requested your transcript no later than October 18th. And I know it seems like it's probably just a click of a button just to send the transcript. Every time we send a transcript, we're also sending a counselor recommender form that we have to complete, and then we're also sending the letter of recommendation that we wrote for you. So this is kind of our trigger to know, okay, we need to make sure that the letter of recommendation is good to go. That gives us that time to do that. So October 18th, 10 business days before November 1st. If you have a November 15th deadline, you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna work backwards, December 1st, yada, yada, yada. All right. Oh, I'm gonna do one more plug, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, in terms of senior interviews, uh, I know that uh, Mr. Addington had talked about September. I'm gonna go a little bit off the rails a little bit. I have sent my seniors, last names G through L, an email um, to start booking senior interviews. Um, there's like time slots that are gonna be on a link that's in the email, and you guys can start booking them as early as Monday. It is very atypical, it's, it's very early, so the other like students that are not G through L, you guys are not behind at all at all, I promise you. I'm just doing it because I'm trying to get in touch with this, as many seniors as I can before, you know, the baby gets here. So that's why. So enlisted was one of those three E's that we talked about um, a couple of slides ago. And um, military enlistment, we know the, the branches. Um, you must be 17 um, with, with parental consent recruiter, that ASVAB test, um, the MEPS is the physical exam. Um, you have to meet with an enlistment counselor to determine their path, and then they have to complete the oath of enlistment. Um, ROTC is available at many of the...
I'll be fast. Um, ROTC is available at most, uh, at many um, universities across the state. If this is something that um, your student is interested um, in pursuing, there are scholarships available. Um, so that's always something to look into. What's next? Uh, Monday, September 11th is the mandatory senior meeting during ALL. There will not be open campus on this day. So if your senior usually leaves for lunch and leaves, if they have that open campus privilege during ALL, it will not be available on this day. They need to stay in an ELL because we have a meeting with them. Uh, junior Jumpstart is what we did back in the spring. Um, so we use this information, it's like a form that they filled out, that we use this information to write their uh, letters of recommendation. Um, all current seniors are going to receive a link tomorrow in their inbox to update that so that we make sure we have the most accurate uh, information available. Uh, up next is our College Now advisor, Dr. Ann Gates. Uh, for those of you who don't know, College Now is a really amazing program that we get to use that we're able to provide our students uh, through the Highland Foundation. So here she is. Good evening, everyone. It is my pleasure to be starting my third year at Highland High School as the College Now representative and my 36th year as an educator. So I was very fortunate to find something I've been uh, passionate about for many years. College Now is a nonprofit college and career access organization. We have been in Northeast Ohio for 55 years and we service both um, middle school and high school students along with adult learners in um, our Northeast Ohio communities down as far as Mansfield. So I am very grateful for the support of the Highland Foundation in support of my work here um, at this high school. I am here 15 days a year and in that time, there are some specific activities that I'll be working on, and my work primarily is with seniors and their families. So the first item I'd like to point out to you is listed on the slide here, and that is on Thursday, September 21st at 6 p.m., we will be hosting a college affordability evening, and at that time, my manager, Nancy Dunn, will be here, and she is going to be talking about the upcoming changes to the FAFSA. FAFSA, if you're not already familiar with it, is the free application for federal student aid. And I believe it was three years ago, Congress passed legislation that indicated there would be forthcoming changes to FAFSA. So we are now in that timeline of preparing for those changes. Those of you who have older children who are in college may have recalled that October 1 was a date on which FAFSA had opened in the past. This year, we do not yet have an exact date you saw an earlier slide that said December. We are anticipating that by mid-September, we will have an exact date in December, once the US Department of Education determines that. So FAFSA is um, a document that is filed online, and both parent and student information is included in that. The procedure for that is going to change this year from the past, uh, as is some of the content. So. Uh, the FAFSA is used for uh, federal aid. It's also used in some, by some schools for merit scholarships. So again, more information will be forthcoming about that on the 21st. And as information continues to be released by the US Department of Education, we at College Now, and I specifically here at Highland, will share that information with the counseling team so that they can share that with all of you in a timely manner. I also do a number of financial aid meetings one-on-one -on -one throughout the year. And for those, I am now have my schedule finalized, and I am going to be putting together an online bookings link through um, our Microsoft, and that will be hosted on the counselor's home page. So for that, you will be able to find a time that is convenient for you, and you can come in and talk with me as you wish about financially planning for college. We can also work on the FAFSA. I am happy to meet with parents and students together or individually, however meets your schedule. 
And again, because FAFSA is not going to open until a later date this year, my 15 days are going to be skewed primarily in the second semester so that I can take advantage of that time with all of you. So that will be something that will be forthcoming. I am happy to meet by phone, in person, or online, as meets your schedule. And I also have set up the schedule with Mrs. Lakins this year, as in the past, that I will be here some days during the school day. Other days I'll be here later until 6 p.m. so that we can do our best to accommodate your work and, and other responsibilities. So we also, so that's one thing I do. We do one-on-one -on -one appointments. Secondly, uh, we set up, the counseling team and I set up a number of uh, workshops and opportunities for students. So these are ones that I particularly wanted to call your attention to. The first ones will start in October. You see there are two dates. So this is an opportunity, again, during the ALL period that we highly encourage students, seniors to come in. We are there. Um, it's not a formal instruction. It's a time to sit down and work through either the individual college application or the common app. So wherever they are in the process, we will work with them. And I think for most of us, if we know we've got a dedicated time to do something, it's um, helpful to say, I'm going to go and work for 45 minutes on this. So we find that dedicated time has been helpful in the past few years. You'll also see we've got some information about institutional scholarships. As was mentioned earlier, when students apply, they will be, um, at most schools, automatically considered, based on the strength of their application, for a number of merit scholarships. So we also look at these institutional scholarships. There's another layer. And so this is where, in November, we're going to start looking at these. And that is, for example, last year at Akron University, they had a number of private, endowed, and other departmental-level scholarships that had a wide range of criteria for students. And what was really wonderful about it was students needed to submit only a single application, and they would be considered for this range of scholarships based on the criteria of the individual donors or department. So those scholarships and that single application was due by January 31. And that was the first round. And so, of course, we want the students to be in that first round. Students who applied after that date could apply by May, and again, they were in the second round. So again, we want your students to be in the priority group for all of these opportunities. So again, we will help students know where to find those on the school's website. We will help them with that, with that information. Then we get into the second semester. We're looking at the local Highland scholarships to the foundation, other opportunities here locally. Medina County has a number of excellent scholarships, uh, along with others through Northeast Ohio. College Now, my employer also has a number of scholarships that we help to sponsor or that we also um, have made on our webpage a number of listings of number of scholarships that my, uh, my colleagues in the scholarships team, we have a group of dedicated professionals who work with that, they have vetted those to make sure that they are legitimate scholarships. So you'll see that in the second semester we have those. The third area in which I do work, and I'll be starting actually in September, I, um, I always appreciate the opportunity to work with some of the teachers, I'll be working with some of the personal financial literacy classes, for example, talking about how to think about paying for post-secondary education and give them a preview of the upcoming changes to FAFSA. So those are the three primary areas in which I work. I love to fill up my days I, with uh, opportunities to talk with students and parents and guardians, and I am very passionate about helping students to get money for scholarships. I've worked in higher ed for most of my career. I understand the significance of those costs. Um, and I know there are tremendous opportunities out there that we all can support your students with. So I ask you to please let me know how I can be of service to you this year. Again, my bookings link will be on the website, my contact information through the counseling team, and I would encourage you to let me know how I may be of service, and I'm very much looking forward to collaborating with you this year. Thank you, Dr. Gates. I can't tell you how fortunate we are to have um, Dr. Ann Gates with us uh, again this year. Uh, we've been with college now for maybe, what, 15 years? I'm not exactly sure, I have to go, go back and look. And we, we get different uh, representatives quite often, um, and, and I, can, I can tell you that Dr. Ann Gates is, is one of, if not the best one that we've had to, to work with, so uh, your students are in great hands with the financial aid part, uh, just an incredible amount of experience and knowledge, so very, very happy that we have her back, and very grateful to the, uh, the Highland Foundation for uh, sponsoring that again, so. Uh, so next steps, we'll wrap it up here. 
Um, again, schedule that individual appointment, students. We're going to say that over and over and over again. Uh, a lot of times students come in and they'll say, I've got a question about this or that, and we're, we've asked um, our, our, our front secretary that we said, that, you know, she's new this year, um, Mrs. Norman, you know, first thing she should be saying to them is, have you scheduled your, your um, meeting with your, your counselor yet? So that's the first thing to do. Uh, we can do these through Zoom as well. Um, we, we got uh, that, that down pretty well. Um, not our favorite. We, we like seeing people face to face, but we absolutely know that sometimes parents are at work or there are other places. We can Zoom you in, no problem at all. Uh, we ask you to start narrowing down that list. A lot of times, uh, narrowing that list is just checking ones off that you know you don't want to go to. Um, you know, careers you don't want to do, that helps you get you closer to the one you want to. So. Um, start narrowing that down. Um, most students we're going to see um, anywhere from maybe one to four or five college applications. The students that come in with like 25, um, I always kind of say, you know, are, are you sure that all 25 of those are a good fit for you? Um, you want to make sure. They're like, well, I'm going to see which one's going to give me the most money. And I said, oh, I get that. Um, but you, know, you want to make sure these are all a good fit for you too. So have you visited all those yet? Um, so we'll, we'll process as many as you, you turn in. But uh, usually they can narrow it down to, you know, five or so or under. Uh, those are the ones that are going to be the best fit anyway. Uh, ask teachers for those recommendations if they're needed. Ask those early, especially some of our more popular teachers um, of the, you know, the science, math, stuff like that, that they're hoping, especially if they're going into a science or math field, um, they, get, they get a lot of requests. And they're happy to do them. Uh, just let's, we just want to try to give them time to do those because uh, if it's one that, hey, this is due tomorrow, probably not going to get the best letter from them. Uh, they're going to get probably a, a good letter, but not a great letter. So uh, give them time. And then send in those scores if you're uh, planning on using those. Um, sometimes, like we said, a lot of schools are going test optional for um, admissions. Some require it for scholarships, and some require it for specific programs, especially some direct admit programs. So check with the school to see. Yeah, a lot of them are college, um, you know, the test optional for admissions, but not for other things. So uh, sometimes you might need that for other areas. So that is really it tonight. We, we thank you. We tried to keep it to an hour. I think we did. Uh, I think it might be the first year we've done that. So thank you very much. And uh, I always tell people, reach out to your, your child school counselor. Call us. Come in. Let's schedule a meeting. If you have any questions, we'd be happy to chat. So.